Hi guys, so continuing, uh, sorry, the first video got cut off uh, halfway through, so just uh, part two right now, continuing with part two uh, to finish off um, the astro weather report for this week, July 4th to 11th. So where I left off in the last part was about processing emotions and if I can only process, you know, one little piece today, perhaps I can process another little piece of it tomorrow and just keep working on it day by day and eventually I will get to an accumulation point where I have processed either most of it, much of it, or if not all of it, um, which obviously is the ideal when it comes to our own emotional baggage. So when I was talking about emotions and, and how emotions are affecting us and how cancer season is affecting us specifically uh, right now, um, uh, in the first part of this video, so now I'm just going to finish uh, my notes here that I didn't get to in the first one. So another piece was about letting the emotions come forth. I did talk about it uh, briefly already. Um, so let what is hidden inside be revealed. So this week we're being challenged, so to speak, um, or asked by the universe to let go, let like let emotions truly come forth and let the truth come forth. It's like, can you speak from your heart can you allow feelings and emotions from your heart to start flowing through you instead of suppressing it and squeezing it down and inside uh, forcing it to stay in there because there's a fear around releasing it or there's just a fear or a lack of acceptance within yourself when it comes to that truth you know the truth for everyone is different um I say this to clients all the time, the truth for every single person is different. There is no real one truth. There are many truths. Um, and that doesn't make one truth less than another. There are many. And like I said, my truths, for example, may not be what yours are, you know, and that's okay. That's the beauty of our world. And that's what makes our world so colorful. We're not all supposed to be the same. We're not all supposed to share the same uh, values even necessarily or views or or truths you know it's it's a very individual thing and again authenticity is going to be the key to to rising to coming out of our shells to really showing the world who we are and what we're capable of and just who we are as an individual you know like letting your colors be really seen um, by the world is is such a gift, you know, and I think so many of us hold our, our gifts inside and and hide it from the world because we're just not comfortable to show them because we're afraid we're going to be judged or discriminated against or um, not accepted by society or whatever. And, you know, it doesn't matter. Like none of that matters because you being as colorful as you are and showing up in the world as you are truly on the inside whether that's goofy or silly or or whatever then like that has to be shown you have to allow the world to see that because when you don't you're not you you're not fully you you're not embracing wholeheartedly your identity in terms of who you are um and you don't allow that sort of freaky side or or whatever to come forth because you always feel like you have to suppress it these are the things that are just not going to work anymore. Like that suppression is going to be felt. It's going to be felt intensely um, and it's going to want to come forth. It's going to want to almost erupt out of you because I think there's such a need in our world today for people to really be authentic, for people to be real. Um, in society, we've all learned uh, through generations how to wear masks, how to hide our true emotions and feelings from each other. Um, so that we can always kind of maintain a status quo in terms of what's expected of us. But those things just don't work anymore. They really don't because it's not real. You know, the masks are falling off now more and more. And I feel it within myself. It's almost like there's like a like layers to it, you know, where you're going to allow certain things to start to be seen, but you're still going to keep a whole bunch of other parts of you hidden. Um, that's kind of a theme for this week, too. So things are going to want to reveal themselves, but but there's a sort of battle between wanting to reveal and wanting to hide. So the two are kind of at odds with each other because you're going to be feeling both on some level. Uh, so another point here is time. it's time to free ourselves from our own attachments. Um, another theme for this week. So looking at attachments, being much more aware of our attachments. Um, attachments briefly put are 
any situation, any person, anything that you just simply can't let go in an unhealthy kind of way. It, it's not a way that serves you. It's not a healthy attachment. Um, this is something that is keeping you stuck. It is keeping you from moving forward. And those attachments are going to become very, very obvious. Uh, I think they're going to be not only through cancer season, but again, as the year progresses, those things are going to come forth more and more to be revealed uh, so that you can process, you can look at it, deal with it, um, and free yourself ultimately from it, because that's, that's what we want. That's what, that's what the goal is. That's what the universe is trying all of, trying to get all of us to do and to understand is that it's time to free ourselves from attachments, from unhealthy things, you know, on all levels, all levels, um, of our life. Uh, another point here is healing the past. So healing the past and looking at the past and, and I mentioned trauma in the first part of this video um, and, you know, why trauma is so important to heal and how we can heal it and how, how like you ultimately have to process it. Um, but healing the past and healing our roots, I was finding root chakra and sacral chakra to be uh, quite unstable um, this week, my sacral especially, but uh, but both of them, like the first two chakras, lower chakras, were very unstable. And again, it was um, the instability of it was <clears throat> showing me how how those are areas in my life that I still need to tap into, how I still need to, areas that I still need to look at and um, reveal what's hidden, reveal what has not come to the surface yet. Uh, so when it comes to root chakra, for example, that has to do with our roots, our ancestors, family, um, stability, groundedness, support, all of those things are in root chakra. So look at all of those things in your life. How supported do you feel? How supported, how, how well do you support yourself? Um, that's a huge one, a huge one. Uh, supporting ourselves now on much higher levels is going to be also extremely important. And I think we're going to continue to be guided towards that, uh, as we approach like December to like the end of the year. Um, so really, really, really looking at, um, everything that needs to heal ultimately. And how do I support myself? Do I even support myself? Do I do anything extra or above and beyond what I have normally done? What I'm normally used to, uh, in terms of what I do for myself? Am I doing anything extra? Have I changed anything up? Have I looked at my routines and my daily activities? Um, and have I observed, you know, where I'm, where I have time, but not using it to, to the wisest, to like, to the best of my ability. Um, these are all, all themes, all different things that, that are coming up for us to look at, uh, because it's incredible. I, I hear it from people all the time, all the time. Like, you know, yeah, I'd love to do that, but I don't have time. And it's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure you don't have time? Because a lot of times we say we don't have time, but it's not true you will never have time for things. You have to make time for things, right? So if there's something that you want to accomplish in life, you're going to have to carve some time out and put that time aside. That's all I'm doing. That's two hours of focused work. I'm not dealing with anything else in those two hours. And that's it. Like maybe those two hours are my time and that's full on self care. And, and I'm not doing anything. I'm not answering my phone. I'm not on the internet. I'm just doing self care maybe for those two hours or whatever, like in however however it fits into your life. Um, yeah, family issues we talked about ancestral, uh, connecting with ancestors also something I, it was like random, like it, it felt random anyway, nothing of course in life is random, but, uh, I just had this longing, this desire this week to really connect with my roots, my past, my history. I wanted to know, uh, like there was this curiosity that came about within me regarding my grandparents who have been passed for many, many years since I was a child. Um, you know, my grandpa didn't even know, uh, he died when I was very, very young, I think about two or three years old. So there was this, there was this sense in me this week of, um, and even last week and over the, the weekend recently that I, I have this desire to connect, to want to know, I don't know anything about actually my grandparents, um, you know, what was their life like and, and what did they do? What did they enjoy? Um, I don't know. I just like, I, there was this desire just to connect 
to understand them more, like understand my roots and my past. Like, where am I coming from? Who am I coming from? Who are the people that have been before me? Who is my lineage? You know, who is in my lineage and, and what am I attached to that way? So, and perhaps what is, what's, what's on the ancestral line that perhaps needs healing. That was another thing that even came up was looking at different, just little tiny snippets of information that I do have about my grandparents. I was just kind of trying to piece them all together. And, and I was sort of like the story kept unfolding in front of me in terms of the traumas that they experienced and, and the difficulties that they went through. And I was like, man, there was a lot of struggle in their life. And it's so interesting how that, that struggle kind of went down the line. And then, you know, my parents experienced struggle to a certain degree. And then that continued down the line. And we, you know, as the children, as the, um, children, yeah, in the family, we also experienced, um, you know, a lot of trauma and a lot of uh, difficult times. So it's like, it just, it trickles down. It seems to be less, I find, as it trickles down the generations. Um, but trauma doesn't seem to go away. It's, it has to be healed and it has to be healed on like an ancestral level. Uh, and there's really great rituals and different things that can be done to, to heal our ancestral lines, to connect to them, to have a desire to release whatever past karmic stuff they perhaps accumulated and we are now carrying the burden of. Because that's the other thing is you can't forget that the family that you come from is, is the lineage. It's the, like you're carrying everything from them. Everything they experienced and went through, good or bad, are all part of your experience as well. And to some degree, the trauma always trickles down the line, always. So I find to to stop that, to end that cycle, we must look at uh, our roots and our ancestors and must connect to them. We must learn and understand about their life if we can, if it's possible, either through family or people that knew them uh, or through searching online, if you can find information that way. But it's important. So don't ignore that. Don't ignore your roots. You've got like, we have to know where we came from. If you don't understand where you came from, how are you going to be able to work on yourself? How are you going to understand what you could be potentially bringing into this lifetime that isn't serving you, that needs to be looked at, needs to be healed? Because I find when it comes to trauma and family, the, the healing always has to, it's always like the next generation has an opportunity to heal the previous generation's um, traumas. So it, it's unavoidable. Like you're going to carry the burdens of your parents and your burdens carried the parent, uh, the, uh, your parents carried the burdens of their parents and, and so on and so forth. So what can I do? What can I do now to balance my route, to, um, to heal any traumas, to heal anything that perhaps went down the line that my family couldn't heal, that they couldn't process while they were alive, you know, and perhaps I can, perhaps I can do something about it and, and heal it, but I got to look at it. I got to know what it's all about first, right? That's, that's step one. So do some research into your family history this weekend and just do a little digging and see what you can find. Like I said, through family or whoever to, uh, to heal that. Um, okay. Another piece I wanted to talk about was illness. So, um, because another theme that I'm noticing, and this is something that's also being highlighted in terms of awareness, like we need to be more aware of is illness. Illness persists until we heal the soul. Um, so physical illness, again, working with clients, I've noticed that all physical illness stems from some kind of an emotional issue. Um, a burden that the soul is carrying, uh, a trauma or something negative, something dark uh, within. And until you discover that darkness, until you reveal that shadow within, until you find the hurt parts of, of you within, again, you're not going to be able to heal it. So you're going to have to go looking for it. It's, it's not always obvious. It's not always in our face. Sometimes it takes real dedication to sit with yourself and to be able to calm the mind enough and quiet the mind enough to just allow things to start emerging, to allow your intuition to start emerging and speaking to you where you can actually hear it and you're going to get feelings and, and you're going to hear words or thoughts or different things are, are going to start flowing through you that will have um, very specific information 
about what is going on within you and what needs healing, uh, what needs addressing. But that has to be done again. Like you, you got to do the work. You got to sit with yourself, calm the mind, learn to calm your mind, uh, do meditation to, uh, to calm it down and then get into that state of like, I just want to be open. I want to heal. I want to understand myself on a much deeper level. Um, I really think that the purpose and, and the reason why we are here on earth is to learn about ourselves. It's to discover who we are. It's to discover our full potential and what we are capable of um, in any given moment, really. Because when you look at it, you know, trauma doesn't usually come around the corner and give you like a little heads up first and hey I'm coming get ready no it usually just kind of hits you like a wall like boom here you go and now you got to deal with this right so how how can you make yourself more resilient how can you allow yourself to to be able to process things so much easier well the only way is through knowing who you are is through understanding your own capacity and seeing your own strength and your own power like i did a little bit of a sort of not a life review but like a yearly review and just to, i looked back at say like the last two three years of my life um and just kind of processed like i had to look at it to to, to realize how far i've actually come you know sometimes we don't realize how far we've come until we take some time to go back and, and look at, wow, well, this is where I came from. And man, remember last year, I couldn't even deal with that. Or I, I didn't know how to handle that situation. And like now, pff, got it, nailed it, right? So it's important to do that this week too, is make sure you look at your accomplishments. Look at how far you've come. Um, look at how much you've grown on the inside, because this isn't just about materially how far I've come or how much I've been able to accomplish. Um, or generate in terms of you know money it, it's not about that it's actually soul work so it's the inner work how far have I come within myself how much more willing am I to look at the things that you know aren't working in my life how much more willing am I to process emotions that I've been sweeping under the rug for years those are the questions that we should be asking ourselves this week because it's going to give you so much insight into who you are and how far you've come uh, and just another thing about illness, anything that you are struggling with right now, any physical ailment or illness or disease or anything that you're, you're dealing with at this moment, even that it's like, we must tune in, tune in and ask our souls what within me is hurting this much that my body needed to create disease so that I would pay attention. What within me is hurting or broken or traumatized or sad or angry or frustrated you know and do I need to heal my inner child do I need to spend some time doing inner child work do I need to spend some time doing shadow work do I need to look at all of the things that I don't like about myself that's shadow work right look at all the look at all of your shadows right and and assess it and and be real with yourself about it yeah I have these shadows and and be real like do you accept the shadow parts within yourself or are you rejecting them are you constantly pushing it out and banishing it because no i don't want to acknowledge that and no i don't want that to be a part of me well guess what you're human we're all human we all have shadow again we come here to understand who we are our potential our capacity our soul on a deep deep level you are here to learn and understand your soul and how to navigate this 3D world using your heart and your soul, not just the mind. Okay, so I know that's like a lot. <laughs> I've kind of packed it in. Um, one last thing I wanted to add here is the thing, um, the thing that we really need to look at and, and again, uh, be aware of. And I think we're already much more aware of it than we were uh, pre-pandemic even. Um, definitely now more so since the pandemic, and this is again, only going to be accelerated. So this is picking up momentum right now, um, not decelerating. So we really need to adjust our values and form a sense of entitlement to the earth's resources. So again, the values that I talked about in the first part of the video, um, we need to adjust again, what is important and can we start to look at and start questioning 
the products that we purchase, the services that we perhaps use, you know, and whether the companies behind them are working with integrity, providing services or products with integrity and with love and with the earth in mind first. Are they doing that realistically? Or are they, again, just exploiting and using and taking uh, Mother Earth's resources to make whatever garbage that they're going to put on your table that you're going to play with for five minutes maybe or use for five minutes and most likely will end up in landfill. So <laughs> readjusting our values. I will read this again. Adjusting our values and we need to adjust our values and form a sense of entitlement to the Earth's resources. So moving forward, the plan should not be what can I take from the planet to create something that I can sell? The plan should be how can I create products and services that are 100% eco-friendly and support the planet 100%, 100%, provide for others, support others, and just overall provide a good quality product. Like how can I, how can I, accomplish this? These should be the questions for future businesses is how can we move forward in a world where everything that we use is useful, a useful, big, big word, because I find a lot of products, uh, you know, pouring in from China and from all over the world, actually all over the world, we produce all kinds of useless, absolutely useless products. All because, you know, someone came up with a great idea to solve some like little minimal problem and then it becomes some gadget that all of a sudden you know everybody needs and we're all buying into it so um look at that you know and be aware what do i use on a daily do i use uh like disposable products for example disposable products are something that i've almost entirely cut out of my household uh i use next to nothing that is disposable um like a package of paper towel, for example, will last me almost an entire year because I primarily clean with rags. I clean with things that I can wash, I can reuse. Uh, I try to buy eco-friendly soaps, uh, things that are, again, very low impact on the environment. So it's, it's important. It's important that we start to look at how we operate on the daily. What am I using? What am I buying? Do I need what I'm buying? Does it truly serve a long-term purpose in my life? Because that's the other thing I'm noticing is that a lot of times we will, and I'm, and you know, I do this too, and I have done this too in the past. We will buy things on a whim because all of a sudden, in that moment, you just want it or or you think you need it, but then it, maybe a few weeks later, it just ends up sitting on a counter or under the bed or <laughs> wherever because you don't actually use it and you don't actually need it. So. Um, that was the other piece that I'm evaluating this week, especially I find is, is what things do I use and are those things something that I can use long-term or is it something that is just going to be for a short term and then it's going to end up in the garbage again. So that's kind of where I want to leave it at, um, wrap it up for this week. It's, it's a lot, <laughs> I know, um, I'm feeling that same intensity of, of the just the sheer volume of, of stuff that seems to be wanting to come in in terms of information and in terms of what we need to process like there's a lot happening there's a lot happening so for closing i just want to leave you with with a thought like be easy on yourself don't don't be hard on yourself this week and and you know even through through the summer months and and as we head into the rest of this year really just try to slow down more, try to be more aware of what you buy, what you consume, whether those are long-term, short-term things, um, and try to have an awareness about your feelings and really, again, especially for cancer season, really allow the feelings to come forth. I think it's so, so time that we get back in touch with our emotional selves um, because, you know, it's very easy in society to get caught up with always putting on the mask and pretending we're okay and because we think that is what is expected of us. 
um, listen, I don't expect you to put on the mask and I don't expect you to be Superman either. So it, it's irrelevant. Don't worry about that. Just be you, do you. If you're feeling vulnerable, if you're feeling down, then let yourself feel those feelings. Allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to release. If you have a hard time with those things, then you know, reach out for help. Um, I offer counseling, I offer uh, energy healing work for people to help with processing these emotions and help with releasing them. Um, but you know, like whatever, like whatever you can find in your area, definitely try to connect with someone if you feel like it's, it's extremely difficult for you to do this work on your own. Working on ourselves, being in touch with our feelings, sitting with them is not easy. And I know that because I've done it multiple times and it is not easy to be really 100% honest with myself about what I'm feeling or, or just where I'm at emotionally at this time. You know, that's not always easy. So be patient with yourself and be kind with yourself and don't rush this process. Healing can't be rushed. Just continue to stay aware, aware. continue to stay present in the daily moment to moment life. Try not to allow the past to pull you back. Try not to go in that backward. Try not to project your past onto other people. Uh, be mindful of that too. And, and that's it. Like just keep working on yourself. It will pay off. It does pay off. Even this much pays off. You know, whatever you're able to do in any given moment is always better than nothing. So I will leave you with that message. Have an awesome, wonderful week, guys. Really take care of yourselves and see you in the next one. Bye.